Let's learn more about why torque is a vector. And uh, so here is the outline of our video this day. Um, first, we'll talk about the various ways to represent vectors. Next, we're going to talk about the intro to the cross product and then calculating the cross product in two ways and finally torque as a cross product. So what are the various ways to represent vectors? Torque is a vector, so is the, um, angu um, the position vector R and the force vector F. So really uh, dealing with three vectors. So it's very important that we know how to represent these vectors. So one way to represent vec vectors is through the geometric method. And for example, if we have a force of 100 newtons directed 30 degrees north of east or pi over 6 in radians, we can just draw the arrow and um, uh, just uh, specify the exact magnitude and the exact angle for the direction. And we can specify the magnitude and direction. This way, we, we can just write F equals 100 newtons comma pi over 6. 100 newtons is the magnitude of the vector and pi over 6 is the direction. Um, pi over 6 is measured from the positive x-axis and it is positive because it is measured clockwise towards the force. Or we can also use in degrees, 100 newtons, 30 degrees. Now, another way to represent um, vectors is by identifying the x components and the y components of the vectors. A vector has an x component and a y component. The x component is the shadow of the vector along the x-axis. So if you imagine that there is a light above the force vector and it's shining, looks more like a shower, but it's shining down on, it's like a flashlight shining down on the force vector, then this force vector will create a shadow and that shadow which lies on the x-axis is the x component. And if you get another flashlight and then you right, um, shine the light from the side, uh, it will cast a shadow on the wall and that is the y component of the vector. Now the x and the y components are not vectors. They are not vectors. Okay, so I guess I'm wrong to write the arrowheads. But um, one amazing uh, relationship between the force and its components is the Pythagorean theorem. Because you know this angle is 90 degrees, so you can just say f is equal to f squared is equal to fx squared plus fy squared. That's um, one very good, uh, one important um, uh, relationship between the three. The force, I mean the vector and its components. And actually, if uh, we can extend the vector to a 3D vector, then we that vector also has a z component. But in this example, this is just a two-dimensional example, so there's no z component. But another important thing that you can um, uh, learn and discover from this relationship between fx, fy, and f is that we can use our Sokatoa principles because they do form a right triangle. And there are special ratios here ratios between the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse side that we can um, utilize. And we can, for this particular example, come up with a formula for the x and the y component. For example, if you utilize cosine theta, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And since this is the theta we are dealing with, the pi over 6, the adjacent side is f of x. It's the side that is nearest the angle. And the hypotenuse, of course, is um, the f, the original vector f. And are we rearranging the terms, we get this wonderful formula for the x component. This is not um, like a universal formula. This only makes sense because um, we are measuring um, the angle here. If the angle is measured the here, 
um, lahi ng aside ang adjacent. Now, if we utilize sine theta, Fy over F, because Fy is the opposite side, then sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and F is our um, uh, original vector, the hypotenuse. And if we rearrange the terms, we will get this other formula, Fy is equal to F times sine theta. So, in this example, our the x component of our force is 100 newtons times cosine pi over 6 uh, utilizing the formula the, that we obtained um, from uh, the Sokatoa principles and we find that the x component or the length of the shadow of this vector along the x-axis is 86.6 .6 newtons and the y component is equal to f sine theta, where f is the original vector 100 times sine pi over 6, where pi over 6 is the angle that um, the, the original force vector makes with a positive x-axis. is equal to 50 newtons. These are our x components and our y components. If we know that what our x component and y component is, because sometimes I am going to give you not the original vector but its components and you can specify that vector using the rectangular notations and um, rectangular notations is this 86.6 .6 i hat plus 50 j hat plus 0 k hat so what are these i hat j hat and k hats they are known as unit vectors unit vectors and the only purpose of these vectors, uh, they have a, a magnitude of 1 because unit is 1. So, in other words, they don't really affect, affect the value that they are multiplied with. So, 86.6 .6 times 1 is still 86.6. .6. But their only purpose is just to tell us that um, the direction of 86.6 .6 is along the x-axis because we define I hat to be a vector that is along the x-axis. Uh, with a magnitude of 1, so it doesn't affect the value, but it just specifies the direction of the value. We do know that 86.6 .6 newtons is directed along the x, as you can see here in the x-y axis. And before I proceed, um, this one is j hat, right? j hat is another unit vector, but its purpose is to tell the direction uh, for components along the y, the the value of j j hat is also one. Its magnitude, so it doesn't really affect the value of fifty, but it tells us that fifty is directed towards the positive y axis. And you can see here in our original x y axis that indeed our f sub y is directed towards the <coughs> positive y axis. And of course zero k hat because our vector has no component along the k hat and k hat is directed towards the positive z axis so what do you call the unit vectors that are directed towards the negative axis simple we call this negative i hat and this one we call negative j hat and the other one at the bottom we call negative k hat that's a convenient way, I guess, to... But there is a better, even better way to write rectangular notations. It's easier. <laughs> just do this. You um, draw these triangular brackets and uh, just write for the first part the x component. And the second number is the y component. And the third number is the z component. And why am I dealing with x, y, and z? Because... Um, torque is a three-dimensional concept. Intro to the cross product, okay? So the cross product is um, a way of multiplying two vectors. So two vectors can be multiplied using the cross product. The other way to multiply vectors is the easier way. It's called the dot product, but we will encounter that when we talk about work. But this time we're talking about torque, and for torque... Uh, we're dealing with a cross product. So in order to multiply two vectors A and B, first you have to connect them along its tails right there. 
So if um, you, you do that first, if I give you vector A and then I give you vector B, first thing you do is you connect them. And then um, the cross product A cross B of the two vectors is another vector. So the cross product is of, a, of two vectors is a vector. It's a different from the dot product because the dot product, the dot product between two vectors is a scalar. So the cross product a cross b of two vectors is another vector that is perpendicular to both. You have to see here in this diagram that a is perpendicular to its cross vector with b, and b is also perpendicular to a cross b. So our cross product must be perpendicular to both a and b, and a and b are coplanar. a and b are coplanar, which means that they belong to the same plane. Now you may imagine there is another way to write a cross b such that it is also perpendicular to both a and b and that is if the arrow is pointed downwards um, but there's a reason why it's pointing upwards and that reason is the right hand rule and we'll learn more about that later. The magnitude of the cross product equals the area of the parallelogram with vectors a and b for sides. Fascinate, fascinating thing about the cross product is that the length and the magnitude of A cross B is determined by whatever the area is that A and B creates. So if you have two vectors A and B, um, then what we do is we move B to the other side just to complete the parallelogram and we move A to the other side just to complete the parallelogram. And if you can calculate the area of that parallelogram, then that would be also the length of A cross B. So for example, if A is 2 and B is 3, then the area is 6. Then A cross B is also 6, <coughs> six units squared. So, right. Here's a fascinating thing. Look at what happens if A is in the, in the same direction as B. You know, there is no parallelogram because they are both in the same direction. There is no area because A and B are in the same direction. So A cross B where A equals B is 0. So that means if you have two vectors, if you have a vector and you multiply that, if you cross product the vector with itself, the answer is zero because what happens is uh, if you have a vector A and you cross product it with itself, then there is no area formed because they just pile on top on each other of each other. There is no area. <laughs> Another, uh, but we'll learn more about the other way. Look at this. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Um, the right hand rule. Uh, if you have to go counterclockwise from A to B because the, the order is very important. This is A cross B. If you had to go clockwise from A to B, imagine the clock. No, counterclockwise from A to B. Uh, this uh, torque, uh, no, this A cross B is a positive, pointing to the positive Z axis. And um, look, here you had to go uh, clockwise from A to B and uh, the A cross B is negative. All right. So this is what I mentioned earlier. When is the cross product zero? When vectors A and B point in the same or opposite direction. Yeah, that's another way for two vectors to be to have no area between them is when they are pointing in the opposite direction. What you have here is uh, you, there, there are no sides. It's just one line. So you can't make an area with this. So the A and B cannot be the sides of a parallelogram if they are in opposite direction. So there is zero area here. That means the cross product is also zero. And also notice that the maximum length of the cross product is when A and B are right angles to each other. A and B. This is like the it's a square or a rectangle. That's the maximum area that you can make with two vectors. This one, the vector is not so tall. You can see here in the pictures, 
A and B are in the same direction, so there is no cross product. A and B are in opposite direction, so the cross product is zero. And A and B are in right angles, so um, that represents that will lead to the maximum possible uh, cross product value of A cross B. Uh, I encourage you to go to this website, mathisfun.com slash algebra slash vectors cross product. You will find there an animation. This is actually an um, animation showing the vector, the blue vector growing or shrinking and changing directions. And uh, it's very nice. So there are two ways to calculate um, the cross product, you know, what this actual value is. And the first way is A cross B, and we'll get to more examples later, but you have to remember this. But doesn't this look like RF sine theta, one of the formulas for um, cross product? So A, B sine theta N hat, where A is the magnitude of the length of vector A, and B is the magnitude of the length of vector B. And this symbol, absolute value, this represents the magnitude. So we're not looking at the direction. And uh, B vector is the magnitude of the length of vector V. The absolute value of B vector represents just the magnitude of the length of vector B. Theta is the short angle between A and B. And N, this is not, this is not um, this should be a hat, sorry about that. It's just a unit vector with a value of 1, and it is at right angles to both A and B. So how did we know that A cross B is pointing in this direction and not downwards? Well, actually, we used the right-hand rule. So this um, pointing finger is pointing towards A. The middle finger is pointing towards B. And wherever your thumb points, and you make sure that your thumb is at 90 degrees with both A and B, with both your pointing finger and your middle finger, that's the direction of the A cross B. You try that. Okay. Here is the second way. This is the first way, A, B, sine theta, N hat. Second way is the when vectors A and B are represented by unit vectors. Um, here, A, A1, I hat, a1 is the x component of vector A, A2 is the y component of vector A, and A3 is the z component of vector A. A1 i hat plus A2 j hat plus A3 k hat. Or using this um, rectangular notation, um, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. Then we can use this determinant method. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, so this is how you do this. <laughs> So how do we solve it in this manner? Don't fret, don't worry. So this is what we do. This is how you do it, but this is what we do. I'm going to rewrite it again. First is um, we're looking at i hat, the x component of a cross b. And i hat belongs to the first column and the first row. So you put a cross in there. You cross out the first column and the first row. And then what you have left is this little square, A2, A3, and B2, B3. And you have to uh, memorize the steps here. Next is you put a minus sign. And then let's talk about J hat. Now J hat is um, belongs to the first row and the second column. So we cross that out. And what we are left with is A1, A3, B1, and B3. So you write that down, A1, A3, B1, B3. Then we put a plus sign. And then we deal with the K hat. K hat belongs to the first row and the third column. And so what we are left with is this little square, A1, A2, and uh, B1, B2. And we have this little rule here for getting the determinant. If you have a 2 by 2 matrix A, B with components A, B, C, and D, then you do the cross thing A, D minus B, C. So you cross and then cross again with the minus sign. So what happens is we cross A to B3. So A to B3 minus uh, A3, B2. 
right? Minus uh, j hat like a1 b3 minus um, a3 b1 um, plus k hat um, a1 b2 minus a2 b1. All right, so notice that you have a, uh, this is a cross b. That's the final answer, actually. You have um, a vector in rectangular notation because that's a, you, you don't get a scalar with a cross product. You get a vector. So actually, if you use the, um, it's going to take a while, but this is what it looks like using that other notation involving fractals. Okay, A1, B3 minus A3, B1. And then parenthesis A1, B2 minus A2, B1. Okay. The basket weave method. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm going to discuss this in our real-time classes. Can you please remind me, class? Here's an example. Um, so compute um, if a is equal to 1, negative 1, and b equal to negative 3, 4, 1, compute a cross b, b cross a. So let's do a and you do b. So what do we do? Um, OK, first thing we do is we set up that 3 by 3 determ matrix. We write in the first column i, j, and k. And we write 2. This is where we put the a vector components, the first, second column, the second row. And the third row, negative 3, 4, and 1. And now we do that crossing thingy. <laughs> I had, um, it gives us i1 times 1 minus 4 times negative 1. And then, um, is it a minus or a plus? Yeah, it's a minus. Oh, okay. So I took a shortcut. Ang una pa din ako button is I draw the um, that square thingy and the minus of a j hat and um, two negative one. I'm so advanced. I took a shortcut. <laughs> Plus and then k hat and then I hope you can follow two one negative three and four. And so yeah, I did this already one times 1 minus plus 4 that becomes plus 4 because yeah you know negative j hat and then 2 times 1 2 minus negative 3 times negative 1 is 3 and if you have any questions you can just pm me 4 times 2 8 minus 3 minus negative 3 times 1 right so we have um, 5 i hat um, minus j hat 2 times 2 minus negative 1 so that's plus j hat and 8 plus 3 11 plus 11 k hat so fortunately we got the correct answer you do letter b and you'll notice that letter b is just a negative of the opposite direction of that same answer you have in a so torque as a cross product the direction of torque is perpendicular to both r and f and this is how you do torque as a cross product. It has to be R cross F, not F cross R. We all know that the order of these vectors really matter. So R will have to be, R is our position vector, again, R hat, and our F is, in this case of a seesaw, this is um, just the weight of the box. So what if you can define R hat, R vector as I don't know. This is purely horizontal, so maybe 2 meters, 0 meters, 0 meters. Because it doesn't have a y component, nor does it have a z component. And maybe this force is um, 90 newtons, so 0, um, negative 90 newtons, right? And 0, right? So it's purely um, vertical downwards. So we can do then um, what our rules are for cross product. Um, we, if we cross R cross F, 
um, we set up IJK and then we write 2, 0, 0 for R and 0, negative 90 and 0 for F. And I had what we are is 0, uh, 0, 0, negative 90, 0, minus K hat, J hat, 2, 0, 0, 0. And we have plus K hat, um, 2, 0. These are a bunch of zeros. Are we left with anything at all? Let's see. Um, 0, 0, so 0, so I this, um, disappears. 0, 0, so J disappears. We finally have something that isn't a 0. Negative 90 times 2 is some um, negative 180 minus 0. So what we have, we are actually left with negative 180K hat Newton times meter. So that is the torque. The torque is negative 180K hat or torque is 180 Newton meters directed in the negative K hat direction. So negative Z axis. And the torque is negative because, as you can see, it makes the seesaw rotate clockwise. Okay, that's satisfyingly good. <laughs> I am going to leave this as a real-time discussion, but if you want to answer this, then you may for practice. And also this, because this video is long enough. Too long. Thank you.